Hello everyone, welcome to another Wartilio YouTube video. I am Lance and I am joined today by... Hello, I'm Christoph. And I'm Nico. Alright, and we decided that we wanted to do a recap of what was, what's likely to be the final tournament of the year for the gaming scene here for Age of Sigmar in Manila, Philippines. Last week on November 19, the Wartilio crew in partnership with Hobby Factory and The War Room, hosted Proving Grounds, an RTT, very common abroad, but the Rogue Trader tournaments are actually not super frequent in our country. And so every tournament that we join or that we host is very special and gives meaningful insight into the Age of Sigmar meta here. So this was a 2000 point event, three rounds held for 12 players. This is a picture from the from the day itself. What you can see is the war room and some of the 12 players playing in round one. The faction breakdown made in the not so delicate table to the um I guess to the left of where you're seeing, to so my right, to your left. We had five chaos players, two two of them are disciples of Zinj, one maggot kin of Nurgle, one slaves of darkness, one Skaven, one Stormcast Eternal, one Caradron Overlord, one Sylvaneth. And you got three destruction players. You got Ogre Maw Tribes, Gloom Spike Kits, and Iron Jaws. And the lone servant of Nagash, Flesh Eater Quartz, um, is the is the only representative of death. So we had a total of twelve players. You know what? This actually kind of depresses me quite a bit just to see what? that the only person who's playing death is playing Flesh Eater Quartz. And lore wise, they're the only ones dumb enough to worship Nagash until now. So it makes sense. <laughs> yeah. So. In the Philippines, death is kind of not as represented represented in our meta this year. There have been a few Soul Blight and Night Hunt players showing up, but yeah, it's especially with the new books. I'm sorry. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, right now, I'd say that the Philippines is chaos territory. Majority of players are chaos. I can name more chaos players off the top of my head than than even order actually. Well, I, you can't really blame. I can't really blame people for not playing death. It's not like death has been. I mean, GW hasn't been really giving death much of a fighting chance lately. So let's see you next year, right, with the upcoming Hopefully. updates. Hopefully. Yeah, yeah. Right now, it's just Night Hunt and Soul Blight that have an honest. I, I think a very honest shot at winning tournaments. But yeah. you know, we've been. We could be surprised. But anyway, it's, it's good yeah. to see in destruction that we have a good spread. Also, no rip at no. No duplicates for destruction armies. We don't have two, two iron jaw players. We have actually. It's nice to see gloom spite gets in this list also. Yeah. Right. So yeah. just for, just for everyone's um, just for everyone's like benefit. Oh, the ogre mod tribes battle tome is actually was the new ogre from mod tribe battle tome was actually used um for this certain for the purposes of this tournament. Yeah. Uh, well, I got the yeah. experience. Yeah, we'll get on to each person's like rounds in a bit. Yeah. So, so spoiler alert: we got a top four here. The person who won the tournament joining us in the stream right now is Nico with his Maggotkin of Nurgle, and second place was Carlo Bagaporo with Caradron Overlords. Third place on the far um, left, I think, of your perspective, it's Patrick Chua, who is holding a Beast of Nurgle. Mini, you can see, or, or you box. can see the look of envy on my face here. I was yeah. supposed to buy that beast of Nurgle with the store credits I won from that tournament, and then I found out he bought it first. And you can see that I'm eyeing it right now. <laughs> and, he, yeah. and he bought it for forty k too. <laughs> exactly, uh, and you can tell that Pat Chua was a step ahead because he's a Zinch player, and the Nurgle player was like resting. Oh in no! So yeah, Patrick Chua came in third place with Disciples of Zinch. And JP Taylor, who is on the far right next to Nico in the picture, is uh, brought Stormcast Eternals. So these are our top four for that day. But we're going to dive a bit further into each of the rounds. Christoph and Nico, respectively, are going to talk about their three round gauntlet for the day. Then we're going to talk about our favorite lists in the tournament. Oops, yeah. Sorry. Okay. Sad, sad, yeah. So, yeah, congratulations, Nico. And we'll talk about. Why Christoph isn't on this screen because he's on this one. Christoph won a more prestigious award. Yes, I won a I won a raffle of Morn, Mornfang Brown. Um, yeah, the bottle of pain. Uh, yeah, yeah. So um, our store part, our local game store partner, Hobby Factory, was generous enough to donate three um, to, to donate three 
raffle prizes, Mornfang Brown, Don Riders, and a Stone Mage, won by Christoph, Oli, and Zami, respectively. Christoph, so, look, more paint that you can eat. Yes. More paint that you can eat. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so your dietary needs were kept the in mind. The goblin you are. Exactly. All right. Also on this day, you can probably say we debuted a new terrain table. The terrain table is from the Dragon's Graveyard set, printed, which you can find on three um, printable 3D, I think is what it's called. Um, and this was printed out by Eminem 3D Printing, and one of the local gamers, Miguel Alegre, who did an amazing job with this. This was also painted very efficiently and very well by Jello. But by our friend Jello of Mantis Gaming. If you want any, uh, if you want to commission either of them, their Facebook uh, link, sorry, their Facebook profiles or their links will be posted in the description below. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah. He painted this really quick, also. Uh, it's actually really surprising. Like, how many days did he do this? In just a week. Just one week? Yeah. Like, shit. Yeah. Just a week for this yeah. kind of quality. You can't really crazy yeah and um since we debuted this this was well spoilers um this is our top table right yeah so one of the things that Wartelio wants to do is we want to be able to make extra tables for tournaments so that we can have a larger variety and spread and of quality tables for, for for events and right now this is the latest one and we're going to feature this we're working on another one now we're not going to say what it is but we're really <laughs> excited to feature that next year Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, so yeah. Um, lastly, we also want to thank like Ed Samoy. He's a member of the community who donated extra money to the prize pool, which expanded it further. And it's through the generosity of like these sponsors and these players that we we can actually make these events and try to compensate our players for doing well in them. Money, money, money. Yes. Money, money, money. Thank you, Ed. All right. Oh, Without further yeah. ado, we will go to the lists that are that Nico and Christoph had. Nico, tell us about your list. It's it's the most big brain army ever. It's Maggotkin of Nurgle, Drowned Men, and for this, I didn't take one unit of flies. I took two, and they were both reinforced. That's revolutionary. So, <laughs> revolutionary. It's revolutionary. I've never been done before. Holy, holy shit, right? Like, why hasn't anyone done this? <laughs> oh. oh my god. Genius, right? But yeah, so I played uh, Surprise, Surprise, Drowned Men. Uh, I took the grand strategy, Blessed Desecration, because it seemed like the most... It seemed like the best grand strategy to take, because I'm going to be in your face. Might as well conquer whatever's in your, ba in, in your base yeah. also. Could, could you tell the audience like what Blessed Desecration is for those who aren't familiar? Yeah, so basically, I just pick one territory, uh, one, uh, one terrain, terrain feature, terrain. wholly within, uh, wholly within your territory or partially within your territory. I can't remember anymore. Uh, then I have to own that at the end of the game. But if there are no, uh, terrain features in the territory or partially in the territory, then I get to pick anything on the map. But you know, that's the crazy. way we did, that's pretty crazy. But the way we did our. Uh, the way that we did the map setup, naman, it didn't seem like we needed to worry about that, anyways. Mm. But yeah, that was my grand strategy, and I took inspired because I love it when flies hit on tools and wound on tools. Yeah. So, 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 so a couple of things I noticed that you picked that you don't normally bring. I noticed you brought Festus and Rockmire Creed. How, oh, how yeah. did those work out for you? Yeah. So. Usually, my old lists, I'd actually bring two Magath Lords, a Lord of Afflictions, uh, eight Flies, and uh, five Blight Kings. But, you know, with the recent point hikes, the nerfs, uh, it actually did hurt quite a bit. I wouldn't say it was devastating, but you could. it was very noticeable, the nerfs. The point nerfs were very noticeable. Them increasing the points of the Flies to 250 each. Uh, was very big. Uh, I couldn't take a lot of things anymore. It was harder to fit uh, Magath Lords into the list now. Um, so I ended up taking Festus and uh, a Lord of Change instead. And uh, instead of uh, five Blight Kings, I decided to take 
uh, a unit of Rottmeyer Creed and a unit of Plague Bearers. It would be nice just to split up the unit. Uh, instead of just having five guys condensed stones, it'd be nice to have two units of ten that could split up and, you know, cause their own form of chaos, I guess, on the field. And it it actually did pretty well. Uh, as you can see, my the the spell lords I took, they weren't even the best spells in our book. I took Cloying Quagmire, which is uh cast it's it's a really simple spell. I cast it on something. I still have to roll a dice. If it's higher than their armor saves, it halves their movement and subtracts two from their run and charge rolls. But it's not a great spell because I'd still have to roll higher. After casting, I'd still have to roll higher than their armor saves. So it it's another like another hurdle to jump over, right? What what did you pick this spell to counter? What were you expecting it to negate? Because you're expecting heavily armored stuff. I was expecting heavily armored stuff, but I just wanted to be a nuisance also. I wanted to slow down the opponent as much as possible, and I really wanted to double down on the debuffs. So I the other spell I could have taken was the Magnificent Bubos, which is minus one to hit casting and I just want the hits, casting, and prayers. But I thought I didn't need that anymore because Blob has an aura already. Right. Another nice thing would be to zone somebody out because of the lack of movement or the lack of a charge roll. So, yeah. So, that wasn't a totally bad choice. What I thought was a horrible spell choice was taking Chloe, uh, Plague Squall. And I think this spell is absolute garbage. But okay. it was absolute garbage, but it did so much work for me in the tournament, <laughs> surprisingly. What's it do? It's a, a spell. It's a casting of six, if I remember correctly. So, uh, if it's if you successfully cast it, you roll seven dice, and then for each six that you roll, you get to give one disease to a different unit anywhere in the battlefield as long as you can see it. But it's only seven dice, and it has to be on a six, right? So there are times when it doesn't even do anything. So okay, that's fair. Yeah. So the only ration, the, the rationale of why I took Plague Squall was Festus has a really amazing spell for mid-range. It's uh, 14 inches, the, the, the one that subtracts your saves by one permanently, right? So I thought to myself, if I was within 14 inches of something, I'd always cast that spell over the other utility spells. So I decided to pick a spell that I can do when I'm not in range, right? So it's just a throwaway spell, I guess. So yeah. I think it's a good option. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Thank you for sharing your list. As um, as usual, your style, you get Battle Regiment to, so you can be a one-drop. Because I think you being more, being able to have your army be flexible, regardless of what the clock says, is a, a huge advantage for Nurgle. Yes. And I'd like to point out, I was supposed to play something else, but seeing that everyone was going all out, like bringing Kronspine... Going Zinge, Cronspine, all the shooting. It, it was an arms race. I needed to go first. No, but you didn't know what they were bringing. I didn't know, but I, they, you know, these are friends. We've played with these people before, and That's you hear fair. what they're practicing. Yeah. Spoiler alert people mostly brought meme lists. This is one of, like, okay. Anyways, yeah, a lot of people brought meme lists and were, were really fun and interesting lists. We'll talk yeah. more about them later. But yeah, you, like, what was the list you were going to bring? Glotkin, right? I was supposed to bring Glotkin, then I realized I don't know, it's my inner paranoia. Whenever I whenever oh, okay. I'm about to take something new, like Glotkin, I always feel what if people bring something that can focus fire him down? Right? And knowing that well Zami told me straight up that he was gunning for me already, so I already <laughs> kinda that kinda triggered something in my brain. I gotta be careful here. Yeah, yeah, and you went with uh, something you're comfortable with. Very Nurgle, actually. Oh, white change, right? Yeah. Changing is Actually, Changes oh, how, did, how did, how did Rot My Creed fare? It killed Durthu, that's for sure. <laughs> and oh, man. Rot My Creed in one round of shooting gave seven oh, disease to Durthu on clock six, and he took six mortal wounds from that. Uh... And Rottmeyer Creed pinged uh, a Stonehorn for 5 damage. And even though he all out defense and had ward saves, it still dealt 5 damage, which was. Which is phenomenal. Yeah, it's yeah. 10 wounds at 125 with a 5 of ward. That's, that's actually a really efficient unit, I think, for its points. It is, it is. It's half the, it's, it's half the cost of a Blight King unit. It has 
nuisance shooting, it gives disease, and it has a 5 up point save, right? Yeah, I think Nurgle in general is really efficient in terms of points for wounds. Like, 500 points of Blight Lords is actually more wounds than a Mega Gargant if you factor in the ward saves. Yeah, yeah, I agree, I yeah. agree. Because 500 points for Blight Lords is 32 wounds, and if you increase that by like roughly 33%, you know, at a conservative conservative estimate, you'd have like forty plus wounds for five hundred points. Yeah, not including the heals, which is another kind of equation for degrading like the amount of damage it takes. But I'm not going to go into that right now. It's kind of wild. But thanks for sharing your list, Nico. So, in dark contrast with Nico, who is a tournament veteran who has attended every like three tournaments this year and is actually undefeated throughout the entirety of two thousand twenty two. Yeah. We have a new pl- uh, we have Kristoff who is who actually just joined his first tournament and he brought this. Apologies for the image. This is the best I could find. But yeah, Kristoff, take us through your list. The sheer number All right. Of so I brought my favorite army and the only army that I have, Gloom Spite Git. So it was so so much fun bringing them, uh, oh, bring them onto the field. So right, um. First off, I went with a ho- with a Moon Clan heavy army. Uh, lots of yeah, lots of stabas, lots of uh, lots of um grots on foot. Uh, to in one part to you know to um take advantage of Galatian veterans and also expert conquerors for this season. And on the other hand, because I mean, it's just it looks so cool just to have like all those units on the board just assembled right there so that was awesome it looks like a proper army it yeah, looks like it, an actual proper army i know right it did. crazy so who knew course. gets us an army in warhammer <laughs> hey 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 we remember we just well at the time of this recording we just received word of uh, we just received word that Goosebite Gits is gonna have a new book, so I'm very excited for that. Dude. Yeah, don't, don't worry, dude. We're gonna kick you right now as much as we can before you get your update. Dude, it's coming out in winter. That's like in a month or two. That's crazy. Oh, the actually the the announcement came while we were play, uh, while we were playing here, but I guess we can get the get to that later. It's yeah. so exciting. Anyway, so of course I used. I brought Scragrot as my general, mostly right. to take advantage of my of the extra command points. Though, despite being like a um second ed book already, a uh, second ed book book already, like getting oodles of command points, like really, like it it still it still helps. Of course, at least you, you never run out of options when it comes to redeploying, um, rerolling your charge. Of course, um. The most important ones, actually, for me is with an army this size, it's going to be an um, inspiring presence. Definitely, that uh, definitely helped out. Um, which also, um, on top of that, my triumph indomitable, uh, indomitable also, no, also helps helps out with that. Don't so, forget rally. Yes. Oh my God, the ra- the yeah, rally. Uh, um, previous battles like previous battle scroll battle scroll update. Uh, being able to rally up on a four ups while you're in the moon and the and the buffs around Loon Shrine uh, around the Loon Shrine where you count as being under the bad moon that helped a lot. So I almost never ran out of command. I always had an excess amount of command points. Um. My wizards were very much happy just staying near the Loon Shrine and, and flinging spells, which actually, um, go, going to it, as you see, like, all my heroes, they're able to cast, they're able to cast their spells. Um, I brought Hand of Gork for my Cave Shaman and, of course, for Scragrot because, you know, for some very sneak, um, very in character for Gits, trying to pull something really sneaky uh with hand of gore teleporting a block of four a block of 40 or maybe even that one block of 20 to capture points at the back line or something 
I brought it. I put it on Scragrot first, of course, to take advantage of his plus one to casting. And while he's around the Loon Shrine, which I almost always put him in, uh, he would have like a net plus two to casting. So hopefully, it was all. It was almost always assured that it would go off. But just in case he died, uh, just in case he died, or like um. If I wanted to cast it also on another unit at the far end of the table, I also outfitted my Fungoid Cave Shaman with Hand of Gort. Mm. Okay, yeah, just a backup, backup caster. Yeah. <coughs> so, and also I brought with me a Loon Boss with giant uh, with giant Cave Squig. I, if you're running a, if you're running a um, Moon Clan heavy army, this is almost always. Uh, this is like almost a must just because of his command command ability to give mortal wounds on a wound to sixes for um for moon clan and for moon clan units which is super uh, which is super helpful and i also gave him arcane tome for itchy nuisance for that fight last which is of course um a really good spell yeah re- uh, anything with a fight last is really good and especially if I want to protect my if I want to protect my my battle line against let's say um uh, let's say things like you know, like um bounty hunters or just a really really big and mean monster right yeah, yeah. so and actually um this one was a recent addition the madcap shaman because previous to the uh, because previous to this um the new battle the new battle scroll update just came out and that came with it uh that came with it um this like discounts to the uh, discounts to all, almost all to a lot of units in the gloom spike gets army notably the stabas so because of that i'm fielding a stabba heavy army and uh the free space that uh, the free space to my points allowed me to take an extra hero madcap shaman which actually since i was fin since um it my list is already perfect for a warlord i took in an extra artifact the moon face moment so that's moon a face mind- moment. Oh, moon face moment. <laughs> <laughs> we all i always like shout that out whenever i use it so moon face moment it gives a minus one to save on one unit within 12 inches of it and it helps a ton when it comes to uh when it comes to like um enemies that are facing against your uh, against my stabas so of course yeah. Sorry, sorry, I had, I had to interrupt you there. That's actually a really amazing artifact, and I, I wonder why Nurgle doesn't have that. I, I really want that artifact. Oh, because really. Nurgle doesn't need it, that's why. Because yeah, <laughs> Nurgle yeah. has, too li- has too little options, I know. <laughs> too little good options. Yeah, you're it's amazing. Like... 12 inches that you can always do over and over again is amazing. Oh, anyway, sorry. Uh, Nurgle yeah, is already it, has too many mechanics, oh my god. Yeah, with, that, that helped a lot for a minus one to save, so... Um, it basically gave my uh, it basically gave all my uh, my all my um foot grot some um, like minus one rend technically uh, technically and it helped it helped a lot. I gave him great green spite. Um, didn't really didn't really have a, another spell to not another spell to get, but great green spite was the best. Uh, was like um let's say like third best that I could have gotten and fit really well with the stab uh, with the stab bus especially since it has potential of d6 uh d6 um damage each time he casts it as long as he picks the picks the block of 40 stab bus against his his enemy target so okay. to towards my nor uh, towards my normal unit so i have three blocks of stab bus two 40s and and 120, a total of a hundred foot grots and a hundred grots that I have to paint, by the way. Oh man. Oh, Your masochism my God. is too I much. No, thank God for slap chop painting. But still, it's so much fun to just paint them, see the uh, to, it was a lot of fun to assemble them, to paint them, and especially to play them. So um yeah. I mostly went with a sl- like just 
slitas, so just the normal, uh, just normal swords. But one block of them um, have the spears, which uh, which was um, generously given by Lance to uh, Lance. Uh, they're all old hammer models, and I love them. I think they are one of the best looking models that I have in the army, and I I love fielding them there. And besides, like. Having a unit, uh, having a unit of um spears, despite being a little, despite being worse when it comes to, you know, when it comes to hitting than the normal, you know, than the normal stabas, I really like that they're a that they have bigger reach. So in case I want to buff them, I get I get to have like more attacks in, and they re surprisingly they're really good at killing at killing monsters too. As mm. so, yeah, as Lance. That's Lance has experienced in the previous uh, game before the tournament. Properly buffed, I saw those 40 of them in Halo Maw Crusher. It was traumatizing and hilarious. With enough attacks, <laughs> anything can die. Yes, that's yeah. true. <laughs> and so, of course, those will be those are my battle line. I made them expert conquerors because their whole shtick is to get in there, park an objective, and just stay there. Despite the... Yeah, Despite um, despite my first initial uh, initial um thoughts on uh, thoughts on 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 grots, sorry, they're actually surprisingly resilient. Uh, they're actually surprisingly resilient with nets and also plus one to saves with their uh, uh, with their shields. It, they're right. not they're not that bad. And now with the new now with a new buff that they're able that when they retreat. As long as they're in the moon, and I rally them up on a four up, they just come back. So reduce my block to ten, uh, to twenty, ten, or maybe even five. And if they're in the bad moon, and with my excess of command points, I just rally one of them. Hopefully, they go back to like um thirty or maybe even more. <laughs> yeah, and. and... Good. Uh I'm actually excited to see what you guys did in how you guys did with your games and how like they uh how your rounds played out and oh, yeah. yeah anything else you want to add about your list first well um just well the rock got toggles they were like very very like very hard hitting um as expected for them but I think one of my army could not stand were it not for their own um support team, which are the Sports Plata Fanatics, and Sneaky Snufflers, and especially the Marsh Crawlers Logos, because that's all. Um, that's an eighteen inch, uh, eighteen inch aura of plus one to hit for the Logos, and with the Sports Plata and the Sneaky Snufflers, that's um plus one at uh, plus one attack each, and that's sort of like the. That's sort of like the whole mechanic that I was trying to play around here with 40 units of Stabas. That's like 30, uh, 30 or so models that could get their hits in. And each of them hits like three times. So you could imagine that majority of my games was just me rolling the dice. <laughs> oh yeah, this is a lot of dice to roll. So in a three-round tournament, this army is actually very mentally taxing to play. Not to mention this is your first tournament. Yeah, um, it was. It was also yeah. Sorry, just to add, also mentally taxing to play against. Just, just oh against yeah, them. actually, yeah, it has a lot of mechanics, and they need you need to force the synergy to work. Uh, there are a lot of armies that are more independent. I'd argue Maggotkin and Stormcast and Iron Jaws have units that are a lot more independent. But yeah, yeah Gits, if you don't play as a formation, you're gonna have a really hard time. You have to hold their hand. It, what What really helped, honestly, like. Just to prepare for this, you're right. It's very mentally taxing, especially for like a a, a new player and a new player to the to the whole tournament scene too. Um, I did as much as I could to prepare, not just reading and practicing, but I also prepared them um, little little tokens for remind uh, for reminders for buffs and everything, and even cards for and even cards that were designed by one of our members, um, Oli. Mm -hmm. To help with the uh, to help with the uh, war scrolls and it, it it made things so much easier for me actually. All right, you guys ready yeah. to jump into round one? All right, yeah, let's, go. Let's, let's jump. All right, all right. Tell us what's happening here, Nico. Uh, I got my dream match. That's what <laughs> happened. Your dream match. <laughs> this is my, <laughs> this is my dream match because 
Ollie absolutely hates fighting me. Uh, cause we uh, so ba- a little backstory. Uh, I love fighting Ollie. Ollie doesn't like fighting me. Cause uh, when Ollie got into Age of Sigmar, I was his uh, sparring partner for the longest time. It was either me or Dennis. And there was a time where Dennis got sick, sadly. So he had no other option but to play against me for like two weeks in a row. And uh, I guess it just gets really tiring fighting Nurgle over and over again. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. I can yes. tell you it does. It's really tiring when he makes six out of seven ward saves every time. It's kind of nuts. <laughs> oh, uh, man. So what happened here was it was actually really intimidating when I saw all these dryads. When I saw all these dryads with giving minus one to hits and minus one to wounds, that sounded very obnoxious considering I didn't have bounty hunters to call their, to call their numbers. And he double reinforced a unit of them. I didn't know how I was going to cut through them. And then I, real- then I found out that they have a bravery of six only. Really? Three people? Bravery of six? I was like, okay. One way to handle these guys. Uh, sorry, I'm going to jump into our- the highlights of our game. Uh, Ali deployed in a very turkey fashion. Uh, uh, he had three heroes. The Branch Witch, the, uh, uh, the Transformer Chick. What- what's her name? Dreycha? Draycha, yeah, see, Dra- Draycha, yeah, yeah. riding the transformer, yeah. I had to uh, think about who it was for a second. See, she's riding an Autobot, dude, like the suit, that mech suit right there, yeah. yeah. So she had Draycha, the Branch Witch, and Durthu, right? So the, the number one thing I was terrified of was Durthu, because that thing slaps so hard. Six damage, and in his, in his list, none of his monsters get tabled. For them to be tabled, they have to be dead. So that's really insane. Uh, right. Uh, right. And Durthu, in his setup, could get plus D3 attacks pa, with a big sword, and that is very scary. Oh. So, my game plan was finish off the chaff and let and push and pressure the monsters to do the work, right? So, luckily for me, when my general got into the charge, I found the, op- the most optimal position. So when my general charged in there, he hit every single unit with the aura, so none of them could issue commands. And his uh, tree lords were too far to. I, I think tree lords aren't even heroes now, right? They're just monsters that become battle line now. Yeah. Um, yeah, tree lord ancients are heroes. Tree lords have always been monsters. Yeah. So sadly, I pinned every single unit and his all his heroes with the aura. So that was the opening to actually just start wailing on the Dryad. So even if I couldn't kill all of them in one strike, it battle shocked them to hell, I swear. Uh, I'd kill about 10, forcing another, like, another 10 to run, and that was really big. Or maybe more, I don't know, I don't... My, my brain no good with math. But yeah, a lot of, a lot of trees ran. Uh, um, I had a taste of my own medicine in this game. Uh, tree lords were... Preventing me from piling in, which was really annoying when he tagged the corner of my unit of flies. So now I know what that feels like. Uh, another big highlight was Ollie rolled an 11 to cast with that spell, that really good Sylvanet spell, where you roll the number of dice equal to the number of uh, the casting roll. So yeah. he rolled 11 dice and got 7 mortal wounds on my flies. And yeah, out of hard. 7 mortal wounds, I ward saved 6. So, for those who are unfamiliar with the Filipino meta, Nico makes an absurd number of ward saves. What is normally a 33% chance is actually a 75% chance in this reality of math. Uh, It's so painful to watch every single time. I I know. It comes out in the most crucial moment. It's kind of weird. And just for proof that my dice aren't loaded, Ollie has seen me roll four ones in a four up ward save, and that killed my general. So just a no heads up. Where, yeah, no matter where you play out, uh, no matter where you play with him, uh, like any any venue here, or maybe even online, he will always roll his five and sixes. Yeah, it's kind of nuts. It'll happen. All you have to do is believe. <laughs> All you have oh to my do god. Inspiring quote from our champion. Believe in the dice rolls, so the dice rolls believe in you. Yeah, if I, you can see me making a face. I'm so sick of this shit, but you're right. That was the, <laughs> it's the anime like, moment with the heart of the dice. Oh my god, every week is anime moment with you. Um, so like, 
yeah, so how, I guess, how did the game go? Did you, I mean, you went 3-0, so how did you, how did you close it out? Uh, I closed it out by killing Dorthu with Rottmeyer Creed. Oh, uh, Dorthu teleported, <laughs> Dorthu, uh, I think, I think he struck, he struck and fade, but he yeah. brought like six disease with him, if I remember correctly. So it was like, have fun on the other side of the map, take six mortal wounds, blows up. Of course. Yes. My god. That was really fun. Not for him, but for me. No, oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So he yeah. unleashed hell on him. That's how he got six disease points. No. Uh, sorry. I think I was in melee combat with the spirit of Durthu with the Ratmire Creed then. But he attacked Blob first. Because Blob oh, is the bigger okay. threat. Of, yeah, yeah, he wasn't expecting the Ratmire Creed to kill Durthu. Okay. Yeah, but Ratmire Creed did zero damage, but gave him six disease. So That was enough. It was enough on uh on clock six. It was enough. All it right, was exactly wild. Oh, uh, that's so gross. All yeah. right, GGs. Let's go to Kristoff's round one. Kristoff, what's happening over here? All right, so here I was facing off against um Pat Patrick Chuasana. Patrick Chuas, disciples of Seen. <laughs> and well, well, um, he de- he deployed. Uh, what was his uh, what was his um sub faction again? Actually, it's the one that could. It's the one that specializes in summoning his Lord of Change. So ah yeah, yeah that it makes that it, one. It, it makes it cheaper. It makes it cheaper for the first time. It gets gradually more expensive. Yeah, yeah. that. So that um that was already bad news for me, especially since I was very heavy in the spell cast and the spell casting already. I had like um five like five potential spell casts in a turn, uh f- five spell Ooh. casts in a turn of potential seven if I if I eat my shrooms up. So there's that and oh boy, he Sorry. all yeah he did you see five potential castings? Yes. Um. Well, I have four heroes. One of them is a dope. One of them is a double caster. caster and um, two of my other heroes could eat uh once per battle could. Eat their shrooms and then cast two spells instead. So, so don't you mean, don't you mean five potential destiny, five potential fate points? Exactly. Yep. It was all that. It came to the point that um, if that I was trying not to cast as mu- cast as much spells as I could, but what made it really hard for me was the. Uh, sp- um his sky fires but i'll get into that i'll get into that later so as you see like i deployed as much as possible i knew that i could not kill him i could not kill his uh, his units or i could even out damage them as much as they will out damage me with all their spells and mortal wounds so my goal here was to try to my goal here was to try to um sur- about flank him or uh, flank him and try to capture as much much of the points as I could already. And since it was nigh this pass all the way to the other side, I had my twenty block of grots just uh, just in case to try and swoop in from behind. But um, Patrick managed to uh, Patrick um also had that same idea, but it said to block off that. So there were my twenty grots just being there like sitting pretty the entire game and right so those sky fires um they hurt a lot by the way so super fun oh my god range they're snipers yeah they are snipers range one attack is... ignoring all one attack each ignoring all negative mo- all positive modifiers on your end and all negative modifiers on their end Mm-hmm. And yes. D three mortal wounds are a six. Mm-hmm. And since it ignores any positive modifiers on my end, my she my grots who have even despite their shields and even despite like having an excess of command points for a potential of um no for, mystic uh, shield, no all out yeah, defense. Mystic, mystic shield, all out defense. All those did no not... lookout sir either. Yeah, no lookout sir. That was um. That hurt like a ton, especially since I save on sixes. So he ate away. He ate away at my at my grots quite quite mm. early on. I 
at the first three at the first three rounds, I did manage to get a point. I did manage to get a um a slight points lead, especially since all I was focusing on were capturing the points. Uh, despite me messing up some battle tactics, that on the other hand, um, Patrick also did not manage to get that much battle tactics off us uh, off as well. However. As uh, however, um, because of this, um, des uh, de um, destiny that was it, destiny dice or fate, fate points, right? There are for some yeah. fate points, some yeah, points. because of that, because of his fate, because of his fate points, um, almost every round he was able to summon one, bur uh, one big bird after the other, and by the end of it, he had like three already, and my army was like, mostly wiped out. The only ones that stayed there were my slog were my Slogoth and Scragrot, who was just at home base trying to defend what's ours. So actually, this is something I'd like to point out, like what Lance was saying about Chaos is something we've talked about before. Chaos might not be initially the strongest thing you see up front face value but in terms of the long game when you're whittled down and chaos just starts chaos can just keep summoning stuff to outlast you on the board mm -hmm. so it's pretty good yeah yeah the wild yeah right. so thanks for sharing that let's go on to round two Oop. not the best oh picture, yeah but the match go how this gonna go a top table all right, so thank God Shot took out Zami. <laughs> I did not want to have to think. I did not want to play against Zinch because before the tournament, Zami and I played twice already, and I kind of got sick of Zinch already really quick. I did not uh, yeah. want to play against Zami as well. <laughs> uh, I think I could have taken Zami's list. Uh, it's It'll be a difficult fight, but I just didn't want to have to put up with Zinch anymore. All the big brain, all the all the castings, all the haha, you cast spells. so. You're winning the game, but technically I'm winning because I'm Zinch. Right. But, so, yeah. so yeah, this is not Zami in the picture, by the way. This is Sean. Just a heads like, up, yeah. So yeah. Sean beat Zami. Yeah. Sean, the dark horse of or the dark horse of every tournament I've played in, taking yeah. out all my taking out all of my scary matchups, and I finally got to face him in this one, and mm -hmm. it was an experience because uh, Sean has never faced. Nurgle before in AOS, and I have never faced Ogre, the new Ogre book yet. The new Ogre, right? The new Ogre Probably. book yet. This is the first time yeah. I was fighting against it, so I was being very careful. He took uh, a shooting army, a mainly shooting army, and Auto God Swallow. The giant yeah, with Mega the best mercenary. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and it's the new one, right? The Beast Smasher. It's yep. the Beast Smasher, yeah. So, uh, the game went really well on my end just because he deployed pseudo aggressively. He is a true destruction player. Uh, uh, he wanted to put him in the front lines. He wanted to get Otto into the fight. Wanted to wanted him to kill everything. But since I got to go first, I got four flies in. Got all four flies to do impact hits into Otto. I got my general next to Otto as well to do impact hits and surround him with the aura. And I managed to do exactly 35 damage in one turn. Yeah, Flies actually managed to take down a Mega Gargant in one charge phase. It's kind of insane. Like, Flies have such absurd damage output and are extremely bulky. Yeah. So I spiked really hard in the charge there. When I yeah. did my charge to Auto God Swallow, I dealt 43 and I got 10 mortal wounds in. So that was already a huge chunk of his HP gone already. Though, 43. Like 43 means he's dead. Sorry, 4d3. Oh, 4d3. Okay, so you did... I got 4 damage. Out of, yeah. So wild, yeah. man. So, when I rolled 10 damage in, I knew that now was the time to do all of attack, inspired, uh, screw the consequences, right? And luckily for me, he decided to attack my general because if, if the giant was going to die, he was going to try to take out a priority target. So when he attacked my general... I all out defense and I saved everything, so he dealt no damage to my general. Oh, wow. So it was really big. It was very big. Uh, I had I also had Mystic Shield on the general to be fair, also. Yeah. So yeah, that went really well for me. Uh, and another unit of my flies got a really long charge into his 
backline, quote unquote, so it started to cannibalize his cavalry on one side. Right. Um, the general died early on in the game, as usual, but he did the job. He took out. He took out Otto. My general for Otto was a pretty good trade, actually, and two of two units of his cavalry, his um, one fan. So, yeah, this was another game where Rottmeier Creed proved to be a really big nuisance because I spread out pretty well in the game. So his game plan was throw his stone horn at me, but since I spread out really efficiently, if he charged one unit, it would be away from another important unit, right? So he can't charge one unit and do the monstrous rampage where he rolls 3d6 to run over everything else to go to my back line. So I made it very difficult for him by spreading things out. Rotmeyer Creed managed to ping a Frost Lord on Stonehorn for five damage and give him six disease at the same time. So that was really big. And that's what killed the Stonehorn in the end was disease. Right. So yeah. Very resilient army, but uh it eventually crumbled to disease. Yeah, I don't think the thing about his army is the iron blasters are good. But he doesn't have enough damage density, I I feel, to take out Nurgle. Like, Nurgle is so... Nurgle is really such an oppressive DPS check in this meta. Surprisingly, I always thought... I Looking back, I never thought that Nurgle would be this oppressive. Because I've played yeah, things with 5-up yeah. ward saves before the new book. And I seemed pretty killable back then. Uh, I'm not sure what changed now. I guess it's just that mortals have 4-up saves instead of 5-ups like demons. I think it's that you can't kill Nurgle reliably while Nurgle can always reliably... Well, can a lot of times reliably kill whatever they're fighting. That's um, true. That, that, yeah. I think that's it. Yeah. yeah. It deals a lot of that, which is good. So you pinned him in his deployment zone and just crushed it. I think there was a huge point disparity in this match. Yeah. It wasn't more of a pin. I didn't really pin him here because he had ways to go around me or even through me. Because he had an opening in the middle. It's just since I spread out completely... With two units of flies, and Blob actually was open to the charge. No matter where he went, something would always come around and take his home objective. This okay. wasn't the, the straight up cut and dry, I just pinned him in his own deployment zone. This was more of a spread out scenario at oh, this yeah. point. So, for our audience, the first battle plan was Nidus Paths, so the objectives yeah. were spread out. This one was more of a straight, straight line. This battle, the battle plan for round two was head on collision. It's Diagonal yeah. Savage Games, for those who are familiar with the previous tome. CC yeah, so, so it was basically the hammer versus the shield, because, you know, stone horns and all that shooting versus Nurgle, the shield. It's, it's actually, no, actually what's weird is you're the hammer here. You hammered him, because you're the one who charged at him. Ah, yeah, that's true, actually. In this yeah, scenario, so Nurgle, is, Nurgle is both a shield and a hammer. It's kind of nuts right now. Yeah, Flies. so... I asked John how he felt, and he was surprised actually. You now that no, he wasn't expecting four flies to kill a gargant, in one gargant. Turn. yeah, yeah, it caught him off guard. So, from my experience, because I think this is where experience comes in handy, where like when I saw the fourth forty three go through, I knew that was the time to strike. Now already, not like I had no. a choice. Well, when you saw the forty three, yeah, you did. At that point, you already chose to engage. If you saw the forty yeah. three go through. Mm -hmm. Right, but that was the, that was the time to dump everything in the already. Yeah, like the all pop inspired of, and all that. Yeah, it's, instead of like saving an all-out defense, because I was kind of scared of the damage output. But I've, from experience, I've survived way worse things than five attacks yeah. with five damage each. I guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, At I've never played against or with the new Suns book, but I know that it's much swingier now, and I think that plays into Nurgle's favor. It plays into defensive things favor. Yeah. yeah. At at least you didn't bring Glotkin against that beast smasher, right? That would be hilarious, no, I, though. Nah, dude. Uh, if I brought Glotkin, the game plan would be Blight Creek another unit into Ado. <laughs> I'm not Blight Creeking Glotkin into Ado. Yeah. I keep throwing shit at Ado just to make sure he'd never get the Glotkin. Right. But yeah. It was a good game. It was a very interesting game. We both learned something from each other there. Yeah. It was good. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The cannon, so, the cannon surprised me. Oh, oh so, uh, I oh, which which one is that? Um, iron blasters, right? Yeah, the iron blasters surprised me because I always thought they were only rent two, but now they're like rent three now with uh, the new subtraction. Yeah, yeah with under guts, yeah, all the shooting becomes rent three, which is 
why abroad underguts are really powerful. Yeah, I would argue it's the best shooting now. Yeah. I think it gets really cut by armies that give minus one to hit, let's say Grots or maybe Plague Bearers or Lookout Sir. But yes. again, in most other circumstances, Underguts is absolutely going to shred anything they touch, they shoot, yeah. rather. Agreed, agreed. Okay, so, all right, let's move on to Kristoff's round two. Oop. What all happened right. here? Oh, the ideal oh. match. Yeah, the ideal match. We were on, uh, we were on our home turf here with the uh, 3d printed uh, mushroom forest it was amazing it was amazing to see i fought against um john john michael and his yep. and his iron jaws and they're so uh, um i deployed he deployed aggressively i also deployed aggressively for some reason Oh yeah, brother. And because go. and because of that, round one, one hundred grots gone in an instant. Yep. Round one, turn one, just thanks, because GW. of yeah. Thanks GW for for those bounty hunters. Really showcased the Galatian veterans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but still, though, that was insane to e- uh, to even witness. Um. John Mike, uh, John Michael uh, didn't give me any quarter, especially since he played against. I believe he's played against Stormcast previously, right? Yeah. Before, JP, yeah, yeah. yeah bef- before this, yeah, against JP, and he immediately uh, he told me right away that he's not gonna take any chances. He's going to go all uh, to go all out, brain, wow. oh, yeah, brain off. Um, his. What was uh he brought an artifact with him, the one that uh, the one that like um gives more damage to his mega uh, to his mega destroyer. Yeah, destroyer. The, yeah. Yeah, you destroyer. will learn to know this very well. Yep. And oh, also man. like he his whole build here was really to get in there as quick as he can. He had fast one uh, he had fast one two, managed to teleport uh to teleport his maw crusher right into uh, right into my flank. Barge him in immediately. The rest of his pigs also got in over to the other, uh, over to like the, the main side too. Which now that I look at it, it was kind of, uh, it really was my mistake to may uh, to like um and like protect in two fronts instead. But then yeah, but then again I, then again like I, I wanted to protect my loon shrine because I knew that he would try to crush that as soon as he could with his small crusher but looks like he but he didn't need to because um around, uh, like, yeah like everyone else was already dead but despite all that i did not of course like i really i did not give up and i really didn't want to if i'm gonna lose i'm gonna make him work for his win at the very least yeah <laughs> i the spirit you make the I, yeah, I, I still managed to kill. Uh, I still managed to kill off like um, uh, two, uh, like around uh two or maybe even three of his, another uh, two or three of his pigs because mostly because of the throw goals. They right. really, yeah, they really helped a lot. You mean three that. units, right? Yeah, three, three units okay, of uh, yeah, three you, units of his pigs. Like three pigs. Yeah. Oh no, definitely not. Jesus, that is not <laughs> that is not something to be proud of. But you know, I guess. Little wins, you know. That's yeah, true. yeah. This is a tough matchup for you. I think that I think we talked about it in the restaurant after. But I felt that um, against Iron Jaws, especially with your volume, you could just conga line your grots into a, a unit of forty to form one giant ring, and that would make it so that when he charges you, he can't engage the rest of your army, and then you get to count, you get to fight on your terms in yeah, round, in, round is, in second that, round. That is fair, and since this was. Um, this was head-on collision too. There was really no need for me to, yeah. There was really no need for me to deploy at the front. Like, oh, I don't have anything. I'm gonna cap. I don't have anything. I'm gonna capture anyway. And if I right. do want to capture something, I could. I had the spe- I had the spells to do it, and also the ma- I had the magic to do it. So I could always just have teleported something. Right. Yeah, I really should have deployed a lot more conservatively. Let him uh, let him come to let him come to me and 
when yeah just let him come to me and have it have everybody fully buffed too because my slogoth wasn't able to do much uh, my sports platas and uh, well not really uh, sports platas did actually kind kind of well too they managed to take out one unit of pigs on their own because of their fight first ability because mm-hmm. uh, my loon smasher fanatics died along with my 100 groats <laughs> right i mean yeah based on the picture it seemed like you deployed really aggressively dito no i really did i really did who went first oh um him of course he yeah. had yeah he he had battle he had battle regiment too uh, and uh i was i believe i was like um 11 11 drops so definitely he went first in this all right one. yeah yeah no you're right i could see how uh in this battle plan where he has an entire army moving forward and you just last minute teleport something behind him to steal objectives is really useful mm-hmm. yeah, yeah that really should have that really should have been something that i did well at, at the very least something uh something for next time yeah yeah you you got it uh i want to say this again later but uh among all of us you had a really good gauntlet actually for a new player you gotta experience a lot of games like another like unique armies actually so yeah, you got siege you got right. iron jaws and then later you got feck it was pretty it's a good spread actually mm-hmm. yeah. okay yeah. so yeah unfortunately the grots did not take this one but let's go on to round three nico this is the championship round oh my god you can see here that carlo was <laughs> Carlo is enjoying himself here because this was a game where I felt like the shoe was on the other foot. I'm used to doing the killing. I'm not used to being the one running away from the killing. So I played against Carlo and Carlo is a very experienced player. Mm-hmm. Uh, hands down, one of the hardest players I fought against. Uh, one of the hardest armies to fight against also. Ironically, was KO. And uh, I got a taste of the new update, which was actually really scary. What caught me off guard was I thought it was only once per game, but apparently it's once per game per admiral. So he had two admirals that could ignore ward saves. So I, he had two rounds of shooting that could ignore ward saves on two important units. And I happen to have two important units, the two units of flies. Up down. So, yeah. Uh, this was Silk Steel Nest. So this was my nightmare scenario. It was Silk Steel Nest is my worst battle plan. And at the same time, this is the worst army to go up against. This or Stormcast Eternals. So, uh, the battle plan was, seeing that he deployed into the far corners of the edge of the battlefield, I decided to make a run for the two center objectives on his territory and make him pry me off it. So, what happened was, I went first. I didn't want to go second, because if I went second and he came to me, I'd gamble for the charge, basically, right? Right. But I'd have less things on my turn, because turn one, in this type of going against KO, if you go second, you're going, you're always taking your turn with something, with one unit less or one key unit less, because they're always sniping out something important, right? Right. So I went first, took the two center objectives, positioned everything, spaced everything properly with the back line. So I made sure that both my Plague Bears and my Rathmire Creed were in between objectives so I can just side shuffle, right? Right. Globe was in the center so he can't deep strike in the back. Yeah. And, and yeah. So in one turn of shooting, he managed to take out four flies. And that was really big. You were there when he Purple Sun killed one fly automatically already. And that was really yeah. big. That was nuts. Yeah. So, he actually didn't need that. Later on, when the Ironclad fired, he dealt so much damage. He dealt like 40 damage overall from all those shooting. But, after he killed that, I won the priority. Yeah. And I positioned, I readjusted my position in a way that I would dominate, like, the left side of the map, the left half of the map. So, he wouldn't be able to deep strike me or fly high into that entire area. He was locked out of that entire area. So he'd have to start from the front and shoot his way to the back. So that eliminates his advantage of teleporting, right? So another way I won this game was I started summoning so much cheap crap on the board. Sloppity Bile Piper on one objective. 
So whenever he'd try to take the objective, he'd have to deep strike nine inches away from the objective. He'd have to shoot Sloppity Bell Viper. But if he shoots Sloppity Bell Viper and he kills it, he can't charge into the objective anymore because there's nothing to charge into. Right. So he'd be forced to charge into Sloppity. Now, when he charges into Sloppity, that's my chance to do damage, right? Right. Yeah, so that was my strategy. And whenever he charged into units I summoned, like my Nurglings inside the objective, I summoned them in a way that even if he charged into it, he wouldn't be able to burn the objective because he was always one he was more than one inch away from the center of the objective. Yeah. Um I think you boxed him out long enough for you to outscore him and to get yeah. comfortably back in the game. His action economy was really tilted when he couldn't win any of the prios to capitalize on his really crazy turn one. Yeah. So, um, this was actually a game where I barely killed anything. Uh, I didn't get to attack till round three, if I remember correctly. Interesting. I spent two rounds doing nothing. Round three, I only killed a unit of Arknot companies he left parked on the ground. Right. But, so, I ignored completely everything. I, I went for the points here. Uh, this reminded me of the, that War Cry game where you and I had, where I had to just... I couldn't kill you with the orcs, so I just had to outspace you and outscore you. But, yeah. you know, sadly it went the other way there, but it worked here this time. Right. So, yeah. Okay. No, I get that. And, yeah, congratulations. That was a very well-deserved win. Yeah, I agree that the mission and, like, the opponent in some ways were... had a f There were some advantages, definitely, in this matchup on Carlos' side, too. Though I don't think it was, like... You know, I, I don't feel like it was completely one-sided. Uh, you, you played very well, and you deserve to win this tournament. Congratulations, man. Yeah, and your... What's this? Your, your Beast of Chaos, like, kept... Uh, your Beast of Chaos. Um, Beast of Nurgle, right? I heard that he really pulled his weight there. Ah, the Beast of Nurgle, I someone took three objectives by himself, because... It's kind of nuts. Yeah, because, uh... An Admiral... We were under the imp well, Carlos was under the impression that the Admiral and uh, an Aether Navigator could hold off a Beast of Nurgle in combat. Oh. But sadly, sadly, um, I was ward saving like crazy. Yeah, um, it, it, yeah, definitely. Splitting your attacks against Nurgle is very dangerous. It is. It's, uh, you you were there. You passed by actually when you saw when he was firing everything into my. My plague bearers, just a small yeah. unit of plague bearers, and he had to dedicate all the shooting just to get rid of that. And he even had to charge the plague yeah. bearers just to get rid of it on the he, objective. If I remember correctly, he could have held another objective, but he charged the plague bearers just to confirm the kill. Yeah, just to confirm it. That was so nuts, dude. Yeah, that is so nuts. I, I saw the saving throws. You were making, you did all out defense and saved on sixes so much. Hmm. Uh, that was it's not something... I don't know. That was like mathematically insane. Like it, it is mathematically triggering that you're con that you save on sixes so much. <laughs> Every it's, time. It's it's a gamble I had to make, didn't it? Because um, if I notice he's focus firing something, I have to make him work. I have to use all my resources just to make him work for it. And the gambling pays off, talaga. Because if you yeah. wanted that objective, he'd have to commit fully into it. So that's where I have to commit also all my resources into slow him down. No, exactly, and. Yeah. yeah, I guess the gamble paid off. That was nuts. The minus one to hit probably helped too, because plague bears are really good against it, shooting. It it really did. Uh, I wasn't expecting the plague bears to hold off two frigates, uh, thunders, and and an ironclad. Yeah, an ironclad. It's impressive. Yeah, if a hundred fifty yeah. point unit can hold off an army, well, that's uh, a there's one something wrong right with the situation. Yeah. <laughs> wow, was... but yeah. Sorry, go on. Sorry, sorry for taking up too much time also, but it's I realized also hindsight, another way I could have played this was gamble for the charge. I could have deep striked my, my flies uh, to pin him in the corner, but yeah. that would be a 9-inch charge from everything, and I'd only have one command point since my general would be off the board on round one. Right. So I didn't feel comfortable going for the, the luck. Uh, the, gam the gamble there yeah. felt worse because i'd only i wouldn't be even taking objectives at that point right and i'd be right. in killing range for all his ships if i failed the charges mm -hmm. yeah so yeah so i had to play objectives here and now i know what it feels like to die and not be able to clap back 
<laughs> well, you know, you say it like that, but you won the game. Yeah, but you still <laughs> won, like, hard-earned Oh my victory, god. Man. Yeah. So yeah. Wild. Well, GG to round three. Let's go to Kristoff's round three now. Ah. Uh, no, this... All right. In so... some ways, Kristoff, this was also a really, really, you know, big moment for you. Yes, yes, it this was. This is an anime moment right here. So this was against um Patrick Palma's, uh, yeah, Patrick Palma's um, Flesh Eater Courts. And good lord, this was so much fun. So Flesh Eater Courts is like my fav, like my other favorite army. Oh, just yeah. below Git. And this was a ton of fun, especially since he brought in like two terror geists and like all those flares so of course naturally i'm terrified uh, well yeah pun intended because with all that screaming and with all my low brave like with all my low bravery um he he could eat away at my army and we just shouting at goblins yeah just by just by screaming at me and <laughs> yeah uh this is a the list that he got was very good. Um, feast day, kind of reminiscent of my of my um previous um feck list back in tabletop simulator days. Uh, except I ran blister skin there, but this one was very fun and very good to play again uh, and very good to play against. Um, we both deployed very aggressively. He took the first turn naturally and managed to charge in his terror guys to the gruesome bite right into my Trogo. So that was sort of mi sort of a mistake now that I look at it because my Trogos were like just out there into the open. And they then again, um, it's a little bit in my, the back of my mind. It was better than having them like right behind the uh, right behind my block of grots and they had to like go the long way around so i had to place them in there but because of the terrain constraints um there was just a small opening which is perfect for that air guys to move in and to chew through my trogs but so well thankfully my trogs were pretty pretty hardy uh, yeah they, they were pretty hardy well um five ups five up ward saves and all um they're the Nurgle. They're the Nurgle units in your army. <laughs> Nurgle units. Well, they definitely can take the damage and can dish them out too. Actually, yeah. With right. so from six trogs, managed to go all the way down to just three. Um, they did manage to hit back uh, to hit back on the terror guys too. So since almost everyone in his army managed to move forward, but only one. Terror guys managed to get a charge in that finally I was able to do what I've always wanted. Pop off all my buffs and that one unit of um of grots. Uh 140 unit of grots charged in to one of the terror guys, and I had to roll 120 dice. Shit. And that That's immediate wild. that immediately like um, that ate away at the terror geist in one in one you, round. You literally came so hard there, and then 120 dice, mortal wounds on a six. Yeah, with mortal wounds on a six too, because of the no, because of the um loon boss. It was amazing. It was an amazing experience, and while <laughs> while that terror geist like instantly disappeared off of the face of the earth the other one the one that charged into the trogs it was already wounded because of yeah. be because of the previous round and three trogs surprise well not not really that surprising but well, for me it was that there were just enough to fully take down the terror guys and while at it another you my other unit um of grots released their fanatics Wiped out and it uh, wiped out a, a group of horror, uh, not horror, some um, flayers immediately. And though, yeah, he was summoned, uh, he was summoning, he summoned a Vargulf courtier and also a unit of horrors, which were great, a great choice, especially since he's fighting off against a horde army like mine. Um, he, the horrors could not chew through even the block of 20. 
managed to stick the uh, to stick them in there. Meanwhile, I was advancing towards the towards the middle and also on on my right side, uh, his left as well, since all his tear guys were dead too. And well, it ended with a concede on his part, but. Honestly, that was so much fun because I finally saw I finally saw again my grots being able to chew out an entire monster in one round and my hey for for once for once in my whole career um my Loon Smasher fanatics did not die before or immediately after they were released they killed an entire unit of flayers and also his entire unit of um 20 you know 20 ghouls so honestly this was so much fun and i i hope to play uh, to play against feck or maybe play feck as again in the future oh well, uh, i think this is big for you also because this is like your first win with your physical army right yes it was it was and it was a lot of it was a lot of fun yeah um and surprisingly no none of my well, none of my units died and you're Crazy. you're right on that one this was my first win and like i kept repeat like i kept repeating before like i really don't mind losing 10 times 100 or maybe even a thousand times because Ooh, don't say that don't say oh that my God, that's no, 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 so no, much no. but at the very least it's like thousand games yeah with every loss yeah. um it's it's a learning experience as as well as possible and as as i say i only need to win once and because of that like it's always all the more sweeter and i'm sure yeah, as, now you can retire yeah as much as Wild. i'm sure no, you can retire. <laughs> no i do not want to retire i still want to win <laughs> you got that one win this is this is what you trained for I am not gonna quit while I'm ahead. I want to be. I want to keep going further. <laughs> ah yes, like a true gambler in a in a casino, never Dude. stop. Yeah. <laughs> Who knows? You know, with with the new gits uh, with the new gits book. I remember this, this was like during the first round. Uh, this was just during the first round when they screamed out the announcement that gits are having a book. I just screamed out out of the top of my lungs. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude, when they announced that, that, I felt myself turning green for a little bit because I, I kind of wanted to play Gets 2 now. Like, oh. <laughs> oh Finally. Man, here we go. <laughs> here we go. This is so infectious. Yeah, oh is... my god. But, like, I just want to say something about your army. Mm -hmm. No matter how silly it looks with all these goblins and how fragile they are, I a kid with a gun is still a kid with a gun. I would not... <laughs> I would not... I, I don't want to fuck around and find out what these god grots can do. I don't want to charge a four anything with a four up save into it. With with a hundred and twenty, with a, even with a hundred and twenty attacks, the mortal wounds oh, no. and will just a little bit. <laughs> no, I'm not charging. I'm not charging Glotkin into that. There's no way I'm charging Gl Glotkin into yeah, that. Yeah, but no, but you charge like four flies into Grots and you wiped out the unit, right? Like you yeah, already I, do. I, would, I, I know you're using this as an expression, but you already do that. <laughs> no, no, I'll charge four flies into it because four flies have the wound density for it. But Glotkin, no. Glotkin or Guo will absolutely melt to this. Guo, yeah, only, Guo would melt to it. Yeah. Glotkin will also, because Glotkin has the same stats as a Guo, hits less hard. And has a four up save. I'm not gonna do that. Yeah, that's interesting. Actually, but... this is where uh, this is where um the itchy nuisance really came in handy. Yes. Uh, yeah, because like I was in I was engaging on three on three fronts with pretty paper paper thin ish uh units because I was against two terror guys and one group of flayers, and the one against the flayers were my um were my Loon Smasher fanatics. And those things, um, five wounds is enough to wipe them out immediately. Right. So, yeah, because of the itchy nuisance, with a fight first of the Loon Smasher, uh, with, with, the Loon, uh, with the Loon Smasher fanatics, immediately wipes out one unit. Then I ignore the terror guys with the fight last, fight with a Trogoth to kill the wounded terror guys, and lastly, just go right away and... um. Just sick my piranhas on, no, no, sick my piranhas on the terror guys. So 
it really, really, uh, those kinds of tricks, it really paid off. And honestly, hoping that the new Gits book would have a little, would be a little bit more tricksy, hopefully. <laughs> yeah, for sure. But yeah, that those were the three rounds. Um, Nico went three and zero oh and won the tournament. Christoph went one and two and won his first game of Age of Sigmar. I think this was a really good weekend for you guys. But now that we, but we've talked a lot about um, y- your run throughs. Let's talk next about your favorite lists that were outside of our usual play group. So, Nico, you want to talk about this one? My favorite list was my list. The joke. Uh, <laughs> so my favorite. Of course. Sorry. Sorry, I had a lot of favorite lists actually, and uh, I would th- I hate to say this about a shooting army, but my favorite list was KO just because it showed it really showed that how big that update was for the admirals, and it went from one of the most one of the more mediocre units to take one of the more mediocre heroes that people didn't usually take back in the day. Now they're really, 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 really good. Uh, I got hit by it, I respect it, and uh, I fear it now. This is my favorite list. Yeah, this okay. this list really won't give you a chance, because he even has a, a purple sun and umbral spell portal. This man wants you dead in the shooting phase. Geminids, yeah. Yeah, he has Geminids, not umbral spell portal. Sorry, sorry. He has uh, purple sun and Geminids, so... Yeah. A, no one-up yeah. defense, insta-kill, minus two rend, no ward saves, you're dead. Yeah. yeah. For, for, real quick, for those who don't know what Geminids does, Geminids is a spell that stops you from receiving command abilities before the combat phase, which means that you can't do all-out defense or redeploy against the enemy. Yeah, that, you, can't even re- you can't even reroll the charge. So, really yeah, s- sin, since we know that uh, since Carlo like built this list and all, with all the guns and every, uh, with all like all these weapons, anti-war saves also, do you do you do you personally believe that he was gunning for you? No, no, no. He, no, no, no. He actually, I, I genuinely believe when he said that he wasn't expecting to get this far. But I, with this list, it actually can get pretty far because this thing is kit, The new admiral is kitted out to make sure your army is prepared for almost anything. You need extra rend. He's your man. You need anti ward saves. He's your man. You you need more rend. You have the purple sun to do this. It, it it's a decent list. It's a very good smash list right here. Yeah, most people yeah. would most people I guess would tweak it a bit and take less frigates, but Carlo made it work. Carlo made two frigates work and he, it works. He, I can't argue with that with the results. Yeah, his gauntlet was pretty was pretty intense. He had to fight Dennis in round one, and Dennis is the one of the two five oh winners for the year for a major tournament. And yeah. he had to fight against Archeon in round two and then you in round three. He actually went all chaos in that tournament. Yeah, dude, Archeon would die to this. Straight up, Oh, and he Archeon. did, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he did. He chewed through Archeon with this. This is kind of nuts. Imagine ignoring Archeon's wards. Oh, no, he didn't have a ward save either then, at this Give point. Give me extra end. Yeah. Poor, poor boy. Poor end, Ender of Worlds, I guess. <laughs> Where were boy. these guns during the end times, I guess? I know, right? Yeah. Who knew? Who knew? A, ca- a flying chaos... Deathbringer's weakness are machine guns. Yeah, I know. It's kind of nuts, right? <laughs> Imagine playing for honor and fighting someone from Call of Duty. That would be, <laughs> it would not be fun. Or maybe it'd be super fun. I don't know. But yeah, this is um, Nico's favorite list. Let's go on to Kristoff's. Boom. All right. So I picked the new boys on the block. Technically new boys because um this is the new og- the new ogre, no? Ogre mod rides. Um, yeah, the, gets me. yeah, actually, I really, I, I, I just noticed that recently, and I love how it, I love how it looks. <laughs> so yeah, um, it, it really tried to use all of the new stuff, like including the new grand strat. But um, was this, and the, the new yeah. grand strategy is basically kind of like a glorified take what's theirs. Now that I think about it. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but at at the very least, when the new when the new um GHB comes out, it's still it's still there and still can yeah. be utilized by them. 
Yeah, and so it's not glorified take what's theirs. It's actually take what's theirs. And a lot of ogre players are happy because of the reason you just said. Yeah. That they get to pick it even when it rotates. Yeah. And of, of course, like, he... Because the only experience I've ever had with ogres was um full Beast Claw Raiders army. You know, um, more, like, Lots of Morn Fangs, lots of, you know, lots of, um, lots of Stone Horns as well. And it was refreshing to see guns on the board, especially the Iron Blasters. And I just love how they look. And it really itches that, um, it really itches that pirate, that pirate can, uh, pirate theme that I'm, that I love, you know, cannons, guns, and everything, and everything. I love and, the juggle of eight jobs. I know the paint job looks amazing. It looks really the, amazing. The juggalo paint job. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's an insane clown posse, right? Oh, yeah. I I kind of want to make make it. I, I kind of wish like one of the clowns had their had his head on fire. An army of sweet tooths would be terrifying. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, well, that that would actually That's... be amazing for a stone horn, right? Like if his stone yeah. horn has like this molten look. Oh no, no. Prehistoric ghost rider, right there. Pretty story to sweet oh, tooth. Right, actually, yeah, and, and yeah. Um, actually, with the new, uh, with the new Stonehorn and its monster rampage. Since uh, I, unfortunately I didn't fight against him, but um, since Nico did, did he managed to utilize that new monster rampage? One where basically his stone stone like drifts into your units. No, because I spread out very efficiently. Oh. He was he was spamming roar because he just wanted to kill me already. All right, yo, that's that's fair. It that's was the tough. most efficient way to get me was Roar. Uh, Roar was the way to go. I couldn't argue with that logic. But, but yeah, like honestly, this just uh, this was just just um, scream to me because it looks amazing. It also looked like it played amazing too because of all the cannons. Um, more damage, uh, more damage because of a new update. And heck, he even he even brought in Odo God Swallow with him. So yeah, it was, fun. Yeah, yeah, just for fun. And looks it looks great. Really, all new, all new stuff here. And I guess that's why it's my, it was my favorite list. Right. All right. That's cool. Uh, it's also a one drop. Funny enough, so three prominent lists have done have been one drops, like Nico's list. This was list. It a one drop? This is a one drop. Oh, wait. No, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. No. This is a three. If I remember. Oh this yeah, that's all because auto god swallow and the iron shit. blast. Yeah. yeah. Wait a sec. So how did he outdrop Zami? That's weird. Ooh. Oh Ooh. shit. I think something we just found something very interesting, but yeah, well, that's what happened. Anyways, like we're gonna go on next coincidentally to Zami's list. So this is the big bad that Nico and Chris, uh, Nico was talking about earlier. He was so scared of that Sean took out. He I is brought disciples. Oh. Sorry, what? I, oh, I'm sorry. I faced against this too, like before the tournament. This was terrifying. Yeah. So disciples of Zinch is really good, or at least it's kind of tough to play. But this list is is. Zinch cheese to the max. It's got a magister, a cursling. Oh, sorry, the magister whose only job is to literally kill himself to unbond the crown spine infinite of Gur to the army. He has Kairos because it's a Zinch army, and Kairos is still a chat even though he's got nerfed. He's got units of reinforced flamers, uh, Kyric acolytes just to fill out the battle line, and the crown spine incarnate of Gur. I played against Zami before the incarnate got nerfed to being 480 points. And he's still committed to playing with this. He has an Umbral Spell Portal and a Burning Sigil of Zinch, making him a one-drop, calculated to be efficient so that he could summon an endless spell across the field and have his Crown Spine charge forward. All in all, I think that this is, a, this is what... This is my favorite list. It's so cheesy. It's so Zinch. It's so absolutely ridiculous and over-the-top with a consistency that only the changer of ways can allow. So yeah, it is a one drop, as far as I know, designed exactly to be a one drop. He kitted that out for me, because he, as he said in dinner, he kitted it out. Not, well, yeah, it was for you and for JP because he practiced against Stormcast a lot. That's true. I, I was actually 
also tried fighting this list with the Chapas with Iron Jaws. I was playing like brutes and stuff. And the game was close. He beat me by one point, but this list was terrifying. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Um, I, I didn't want to put up with it. I, I was too tired. I wasn't in my I was like shit, this thing's so stressful to fight against. Yeah, I I I remember like right after my first round, I w- I went up to Lance and I said Please don't, please don't tell me I'm not fighting Zinch again. <laughs> yeah, it was actually very close. You almost had to fight Zinch again because Sean beat Zami pretty badly. Yeah, I also went up to Lance and slipped a uh, hundred peso bill into his pocket and said, "Please pair me up against all. Please pair me up against all you round one." Yeah, and I took that bribe, which is why you got paid. No, I didn't. Which is why you got paid all you round one. But yeah, sorry. Uh, maybe come on time next time. No, it's not because he was late. It's because I'm we had someone yeah. roll for the matchups. It's not because all he's late. So for history, uh, the reason uh, Nico was the volunteer by player and Ollie showed up late to a previous tournament, which is why they had to fight. And Ollie had a fantastic time. Sense the sarcasm in my voice. But he had yeah. a good time. But it was, I don't know, man. Nurgle is really strong. It's it's never like you always feel like you cannot make mistakes fighting Nurgle. While Nurgle can absorb double turns like no one's business. Yeah. I kill things on your turn. Yeah, it is what it is. So, yeah, those are our favorite armies. And as Christoph mentioned earlier, we have a roadmap of 2022-2023 because the tournament took place during GW's Open Tournament. And we are excited for winter because we have Slaves to Darkness, Beasts of Chaos, and Gloom Spike Git coming from December to February. Oh, Green skin God. stick together. And uh, what's this? What? What did the like? I I'm so excited for both Beast of Chaos and Gloom Spike Gits. Well, m- m- mainly if Gloom Spike Gits. I mean, it's it's my yeah. army after all. It's so yeah. Deep. Not just them, but beasts too. Which um, I heard that they're getting a new model too. That's awesome. Yeah, but plus one to plus one to wound, and that thing is nuts. They they need more than just one new model, but I hope there's more. I really um, hope there's more. Yeah. This is actually a very scary time to be a beast player and a very awesome time to be Gloom Spike Gits because the Gits have everything to gain. Beast of Chaos is top of the ranks right now worldwide, uh, outscoring even Seraphon, Maggotkin, Sons of Behemoth, and Disciples. And they have the most to lose if the yeah. changes are not aligned with the way they're currently played. But based from all three of these are sorry, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Go, go ahead, go ahead, sorry. All right, real quick, like all three of these armies appearing in winter is not really a coincidence, I think, because they're coming at the cusp of a new HHB. All three of these armies have a horde mechanics, and coming out after Bounty Hunter meta might just be the best timing for these books to come out. Small small heroes, right? Oh god, that is so, so that's exciting. the rumor. That's the oh, rumor. Yeah. Uh, let's yeah. see. Let's see if it holds up. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, Nico, what are you trying to say? No, I was gonna say lang na based on the way they're making the new book, it seems like they're nerfing a lot of the meta stuff, but they're doing it in a way. It 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 feels like they're doing soft nerfs, but they're also giving the army other ar- these meta armies other options, which I appreciate actually. It, yeah, it is. That's so, <laughs> like the the main thing about Beast of Chaos is just their herdstone, right? That's like what's carrying them. If I if if I'm not Dana, if I'm not wrong, well, everything's carrying Beast of Chaos right now, actually, right. which is really nice about the army. So yeah. if they're going to nerf one mechanic, I'm pretty sure they're going to give them buffs all around to make it more balanced. Yeah, I hope yeah. So. And what one thing that I'm excited for because um, looking at all looking at all the other books uh looking at all the other books um i love how they're able to put the theme of the army into the into the rules like night hunt and night hunt and fire slayers were big winners when it came to that whole thematic thing for me and i'm i'm just really really excited on what they have in store for gloom spike gits and let's see hope let's see what they what they're able to change with with the moon yeah oh, they're gonna take they're gonna take away your net now oh come on that's the only thing that's, that's for sure that would be depressing but also i can't wait see this extra order tome over here that's another luminous tome i'm so excited oh yes because we all know oh, luminous needs it yeah. an annual tome 
Spend more money, throw money at GW Luminous, new Luminous Whales. Yeah, but on spring though, those two death battle tomes. Oh, Dude, I'm excited for the two chaos battle tomes. There's only two more chaos books left. That's Corn and Corn and Slanesh, Wrath and yeah. Rapture, right there. Yeah, in theory, Soulblight shouldn't be one of these tomes because Soulblight was designed for third ed. But yes, this but... order tome is contentious. It could be Seraphon or Ko. I am expecting Seraphon because they rumor build, they rumor engine a lot of Seraphon, Aztec, uh, Aztec symbols and buildings, all those and, structures, uh, and new new Seraphon models recently too. It's not that not that far off, really. That's true, but yeah, yeah. we'll see. Uh, as of right now, only time will tell. We made predictions before. We got close, but no cigar. But that's it for the announcement. We'll probably hey, talk GW. about these more. Sorry, what? GW always finding ways to disappoint us. So, I mean... Actually, to be honest, GW, I think, is doing a great job right now. Now with the, overall, with the updates, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 The tomes themselves are good. The tomes are great. Yes. The meta is in a very healthy place. Although we, I think as a country, we haven't figured out how to dismantle Nurgle yet. You so, dismantle we'll it by making sure that I can't make it to the tournament. <laughs> yeah, that's a problem. Jo- I'm joking. I'm joking. Thanks for the tip, Nico. But you break your legs, I see. <laughs> right. Break so, your legs and don't wake Nico up if he sleeps over at your house. <laughs> yeah. So we had one more group shot of everyone who joined the tournament as well as some of the organizers. And yeah, it was a great time last weekend. And I hope that if you're watching this and you are interested in Age of Sigmar and you're based in the Philippines or you're traveling to the Philippines for whatever reason, you hit us up. And if there's an event, we'd love to have a game with you. Or even if there's no event, just you know, have a casual game and stuff. Yeah, and we also have our Discord um, Facebook page too. Yeah, so we're going to link those in the description. But if you enjoy content like this and want to keep up with what's happening in Manila, you like the sound of our voices, or you like hearing more Age of Sigmar content because all the other content creators are just not enough at the moment. You want more? Give us a subscribe. So give us a subscribe. Um, follow us on Facebook and join our Discord Discord group. Yeah. yeah. Um, do you guys have any closing comments? No. Uh, the uh, only thing I can say is like um had had a ton of, had a ton of fun. This was um my first. This is my first uh, first tournament. I was new to to the whole Warhammer scene too. Helped out by a lot of people in the community. Helped out a lot of people by a lot of people in the community, and I really look forward to staying even staying even more and get some more games in. Fantastic. So yeah, uh, Nico, you have anything else to add? Uh, praise Nergo. Of, of course. course. <laughs> yeah. So a thousand so, yeah. boxes in all of you. All right, so thank you everyone for joining us. Um, this has been the Wartelio crew, and we are signing off right now. See you in the next video or on the tabletop. Peace.